Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Need a beer? Uh, no. Are no. <laughs> Britain's jobless get £100 million in benefits every day. We've got more than we think. But is it milking the system? Yeah, I just want to shop. Or getting what you deserve. Well, if they want to watch something on this telly on the sky, they can watch it. Because it won't affect me watching Virgin upstairs, so I'm not bothered. <laughs> so are benefits right or are they wrong? Fuck a lot of them. There's no law out there to say how many kids you can have and how many kids you can't have. When is enough enough? I could come off all this easily if I was pulling in 30 grand a year. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to just go work in McDonald's? Have you got any houses, Billa? This house within is fucking falling apart, mate. I think it tastes very nice wet, darling. This is 37-year-old Heather Frost, a mum who gets around 900 quid a week in benefits for her and her kids. Well, get out of the way a minute. Right, give me right, come here, brats. There are 11 of them in all, two boys and nine girls, including Ruby, who's eight today. You want nuggets? Yeah, darling. With a family this size, birthdays certainly ain't cheap. Burger, I've got burger, man. You got a burger? Chloe, what are you having? But Heather does get benefits for eight of her kids. If she earned what she gets from the state, she'd need a job paying around 60 grand a year. And with this many kids and grandkids, the parties come round quicker than you can say, happy birthday. It is birthday Sunday. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> she was four. Ruby's today, she's eight. Then it's Sophie's, she's going to be 22. Oh, 23? Then it's Jay's the week after, it'll be 15. <laughs> Toilers, and then Toby's. It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. Gives the kids. Get a sick of birthday cake. But yeah. <laughs> it's still coming on. Four birthday cakes this month. <laughs> this supersized Gloucestershire family has one mum, has had three dads, and gets in benefits three times the typical UK family income. Yes, people don't agree with benefit systems and shit like that, but the benefit system is put there to help people that can't go out and work, you know? Yes, it's my choice and my decision to have a large family, but there's no law out there to say how many kids you can have and how many kids you can't have. There's people out there more kids than me. That's my argument. So, Friend Laura does go to work. It's me that just sticks to one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have more babies. Yeah, that's it. I'll just pop <laughs> 11 kids. I'll be all right then. <laughs> Heather has never had a full-time job. As a result, she's been labelled doll queen and shameless super scrounger. Fred West or fucking... Hey, someone who murdered someone wouldn't have got as much shit in press as what I got. The amount of hating, fucking name-calling we got, if it was someone that suffered with depression, they'd have gone and jumped off a cliff and killed herself, probably. Yeah. The UK spends around £40 billion a year on benefits for the unemployed. And a big slice goes on single mums like Sophie and Emma. They came to London as teenagers. Now they've got kids and live in Camden, one of the most expensive parts of the country. Enjoying the city means trips to nail bars. I like a full set of acrylic. Although this one was free. Yeah, sorry and fun that lasts all night long. Went out, had a little drink, came back. Had a little more drink. Got a little more drink. 
<laughs> put a little I've music a little on drink. and then got a little bit waving bag. and yeah I didn't get yeah. home till 8 o'clock in the morning is all I'm saying <laughs> no sleep at all <laughs> do you have silver like a glitter silver a thick one and orange who does the eyelashes another lady she is she in yeah. I want her she to be mine yeah how long have you been doing this? Yeah, hot. Ten years. Ten years? Too long lately. <laughs> you got a wife? Yeah. I bet she loves you, innit? In it, always in it. <laughs> Sophie's 21, with a four-year-old daughter. As well as her two-bed flat, she gets benefits of 115 quid a week. We are so lucky because in other countries and that they get no housing, they get no help. So for me having a house that they pay for, I am happy for that. What's happening? Emma's 28. Her benefit? She gets about 250 a week. And the two-bed flat that she shares with her four kids, all under 11. At this moment in time, I'm on benefits because not that I have to be, because I don't. How, do, how can you put it? It just it is the way it is at the moment until we can better ourselves. I think when you do work, you do miss out on too much of your children growing up and you're not seeing it all the time and before you know it, the big and you're like, where did all them years go? Right, so I'm going to go this way first. I'll call yeah. you later. All right, all right bye bye. bye. <laughs> it's one of the pigs, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Julie and Vinny Bienvenue are also experts on life on the door. I, I need a beer. No. I really no. need a beer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I need a beer. These newlyweds are part of Britain's record number of long-term unemployed. No work for more than six years. And their only hard graft is working the system. I'll take so much and I've took enough. Julie's 44, Vinnie 38. She's got six kids, he's got three. But they've not yet had a child together. <laughs> now they've moved back to their hometown, Liverpool. One of the cheapest places to live and one of Britain's employment black spots. People find it easier to live off the government because they, they get most of the things paid for them. And yeah, it is easy doing that. It is easy doing that. You've got people out there screaming for jobs that want to work but can't get a job. And then you've got people that don't want to work and can't be asked and they find it easy to claim benefit. And I don't know how they justify that. I am in that position, yeah. I'll hold my hands up, yeah. I am getting money off the benefit. And one of the first things that needs sorting out in a new home is the telly. Helped by living cousin Carol, who's also on benefits. So it'll be 113 99 after that. If you stayed on that. At the end of the day, you'd be better off going for the VIP one because it's all it's included. The one that's in the back room is basically the sky. Then when we go on to the front, when Virgin gets put in, there'll be a telly there for Virgin, and then in the bedroom there'll be Virgin. Well, if they want to watch something on this telly on the sky, they can watch it. And if they want to watch something over there on Virgin, they can watch it. Because it won't affect me watching Virgin upstairs, so I'm not bothered. <laughs> but back in Gloucestershire, TVs are just small fry. Here, Doll Queen, Heather Frost and her 11 kids are in line for a six-bedroom, half-a-million-quid house. The sort of home many taxpayers can only dream about. Big families on benefits need big houses, and Heather Frost and her 11 kids are no exception. You have dinners today, you have packed lunches tomorrow, right? They're in line for this impressive new home. But for now, two neighbouring three-bed council houses are where you'll find Heather and all those kids. Sophie. Then Toby, Angel, Jay, Chloe, Paige, Emily, Beth, Ruby, Daisy and Stinky Tilly. 
Chloe, daughter number three, is 14, the age Heather was when she had her first child. Quite a lot of people have babies young now, don't they? So it's quite common now to start at a young age. Some of them were planned, some of them were, weren't, but yeah. It's just one of those things, if it's put there, then you should keep it, shouldn't you? I don't believe in abortions. Never have. You know, if you make a mistake, then you learn by it, don't you? If you told me 20 odd years ago I'd have 11 kids at my age, I'd have probably said no. Mommy. But no, they're here now. Mommy. They're my babies. And it's my job to look after them. Mommy. Best way I can. Mommy. What? Yeah. Heather's task of looking after those kids is helped by benefits roughly equal to a 60 grand a year job. There you go. You only get what you're um, entitled to. You know, we have to budget what we live on. You know, like weekly shop costs quite a bit, then gas and electric for both houses. You know, it's all got to come out of it. So by the end of the week, you're guaranteed you're skinned. You know, we can't afford to take the kids to Spain or posh holidays, you know. People get pissed off at the fact, you know, like they're working and they're thinking, well, you know, Heather's getting, you know, whatever money she gets for the kids. You think if I just popped out loads of kids, I wouldn't have to work, would I? Just came off the doll. Live a, oh, not a life of luxury, but. They seem to be able to live better, don't they? they? Seem to be able to do more. And I know a lot of other... Do do what? Well, be able to afford a house. Do you know what I mean? Because if I didn't work... Yeah, but I'd we have don't the afford a house. It's the council. That's what I'm saying. Property. So if I didn't work, I'd have the council pay my rent, all my rent, all my council tax. Do you know what I mean? From when I was working, when I went full-time, I had to pay all my, all my housing benefit, all my council tax. Do you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's a nice posh phone you got there, Laura. Uh, it's because I work, Lev. <laughs> yeah. Look who's over there. Look there are rules and regs for unemployment oh. benefits. Oh, wow. You only get what you're entitled to. What you? <laughs> <laughs> but in Liverpool, Julie and Vinny want more. It's like you're having to plead to get what you've worked for because all they want to be is tie-fisted bastards. <laughs> it's true, because that's all they are, pure tie-fisted bastards. They don't want to pay nothing. And that they really don't want to pay nothing back to people. If I knew now, what the, years ago, that they were going to end up only paying a miserly amount of money, I wouldn't have bothered fucking working. I wouldn't have. Julie gets sickness benefit. 310 quid a fortnight. It's a payment that includes Vinnie's claim, and it all adds up to about a minimum wage. And that's meant to clothe you, me, pay gas, electric, water, TV, and decorate a house. It ain't, it can't, you can't do it. We just can't do it. We're not, so, we're, we're, it is a joke. We're not, we're really not surviving. We are, we are well and truly. Fucking in shit street, the shit, the paddle, the fucking creaking paddles just gone <laughs> pop. <laughs> no, you meant to break it, love. What is it, everything you have? You've got to share with the bits. <laughs> Who's me? <laughs> oh, look, now you put her at the floor. <laughs> Having fattened up the pigeons, now it seems to be the turn of daughter Charlotte. Hello. Hello, daughter. Hello, mummy. <laughs> <laughs> You're that bloody skinny, love. Need to put a bit of weight on. <laughs> All of Vinnie and Julie's nine children are living on benefits. They're the next welfare generation. And like mum, 19-year-old Charlotte also struggles to make ends meet. For what you get a fortnight, really, you should be able to manage a lot better than you are doing. I don't have the luxuries that everyone else that works have, but, you know, it's not that I'm, you know, it's not that I'm not trying to find work. Torture them like So while a job remains elusive, Julie has to ring up the door office to check just how much cash they've got coming in. Yeah, hi, my name's Mrs Bienvenue. Um, if I give you my national insurance number, can you possibly tell me how much will be in, uh, going into my bank, please? Yep. No. Right. We got a bit. We got more than we think. Right, thanks a lot, bye. 
And with unexpected cash in the bank, it's time to spend. Hopefully, I can get me money out. Put it all, put it all, put it all. Gas and electric, if they do it. Basically, it's 10 gas, 10 electric, just go. <laughs> Anything else you want, look? Come on. Cheers, sweet. Bye. Julian and Vinny do have to budget, but they spend more on fags and their TV package than they do on food and yeah. other basics. I've got to get the cat food, cat litter, tin stuff, sweltering. It's not good. No. No. In London, Emma and Sophie have gone shopping on a different patch. Oh, they're nice. Oh, God, you're like going to a funeral. Do you like it? I can't no. like it. Oh, these are nice. I like this. I would blatantly rock that. Do you think that's nice? On me. One size fits all. They don't, it's a lie. I yeah. like them. Should I get the black or the white? I just want to sit down and have a drink. Yeah, I just want to shop. Em, why are you buying more dresses? Come here, come here. Like You've got dresses. dress after dress after dress after dress. I know. Other people do need to understand it's not about people sponging off benefits, it's about people trying to help themselves yeah, and help are their people children. There that genuinely are like, they're quick to moan saying, oh, all these immigrants taking our jobs, but yet they ain't quick to get off the rust and go and get a job. Exactly. Exactly, I can't be dealing with it. Despite their cooking skills, Sophie and Emma have no qualifications. So what alternative is there to a life on benefits? The job centre doesn't help. People say, oh, go down the job centre. It doesn't help. It really, really doesn't because you go there and there's loads of jobs there that are crap and that you don't even get because you ain't got a lot of experience because yep. the government's not... And not only that, put it this way, Sophie, you've got employees out there that would rather take someone on without any commitments because they know, had they have children, at some point they could possibly turn around and say, do you know what, sorry, I can't make it in today because my child's sick. That's five kids. That's why I ain't had any more kids at the moment because you know if I ain't got a job to support them then how am I going to be having loads more kids you know what I mean so like there's people out there that put you down for being on benefits and you think oh you know I am but no no not at all I'm not like that just because I'm getting a little bit of help that's all I see it as you're helping me at the moment if you're gonna worry about what somebody says all throughout your life you ain't gonna get on with your this life this is what I'm saying that's why I don't bother worrying about what people say because what's the point do you know what I mean I'm asking the government just to help me out just a little bit. And I don't want to be living off the council for the rest of my life. You want security for yourself? Exactly, you? that's exactly what it is, security. Oh, that onion's well strong. Emma and Sophie know they could be called scroungers, so they have considered getting a job. Could come off all this easily if I was pulling in 30 grand a year because I've estimated how much I'd need, rent, council tax, water rates, utility bills, food for the children, clothing. Do you know what I mean? And I reckon I could. So Emma won't sign off unless she gets more than the average UK salary of 26 Hello. grand. Hello. And Sophie Hello. wants training, not a minimum Hello. wage. Because they're basically saying, next year, if you do go on job seekers, you can't train, you can't do this. So what do you want me to do? Do you want me to just go work in McDonald's and stay there for a few days and move on to KFC and then move on to Subway? Do you know what I mean? It's silly. Gets on my nerves. Finding a job for Julie and Vinny is even more of a challenge. What's the windows? What's the windows? <laughs> <laughs> They've just moved to a city with mass unemployment. But Julie still has high expectations, even though they've been out of work for six years. Find me a job. 
after, after tax insurance and after I've paid all my bills, and I have, I'm left with at least 500 quid a week and I'll take it. Whether that means shoving my hands down shitters and cleaning toilets, I'll do it. But it, I've got a ha I want 500 quid at the end of each week after I've paid all my bills left. We can't do that. You know, you're not, you know, you're not going to get that. I really do want to get back to work because I'm getting bored. And it's, it's things like not being able to take it out or right, not being able to buy it anything. And it does, it, it, it hurts in a way. The two have in them. Too I, like, yeah, I like the light ones, mate. They just, they, they, they glide better. And Vinny's got an opinion about the superstars who work not far from the end of the street. You, you, you look at a footballer, 90 grand a week. Why? If you're doing 30 hours training a week and kicking a ball up a fucking field, give me a job. I'll earn 90 grand a week for doing fuck all. Was that really the wrong one you said In the to unlikely you event of Vinny getting a contract to play up front for Liverpool, he might earn enough oh, to yeah. live in a house like this. But instead, it's Heather and her army of kids who will soon be moving in, courtesy of the welfare state. Time for a sneak preview with Laura. It looks lush. See the elf? I think it looks real nice, mate. Really nice. So you can move it next door to me? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really nice. She's lucky, definitely. Yeah, anyone would jump a chance at that, wouldn't they? There are six bedrooms, three bathrooms, even somewhere to store the spade. It'll probably sell for half a million, but the new tenant doesn't seem very impressed. Well, yeah, anyone's going to be lucky to get a brand new house, aren't they? But, you know, it's still a home for my kids at the end of the day. You know? And when you're not paying, the money really doesn't matter. Well, I suppose whatever it did cost the council to build them, they get it all back in the rents anyway, don't they? That's what we pay rent for, isn't it? I presume. And the council tax and whatever people pay. Not like everybody says I get used to the trains, but. I don't know. No. I wouldn't. I think it's horrible how close it is. Heather's move is fast approaching, but there are storm clouds ahead. is one of the largest chunks of Britain's welfare bill. Oh, the cheeky twats. <laughs> and Julie and Vinny have been claiming it for six years. Although the home they've just moved into isn't entirely to their liking. Oh, this is a shit old kitchen. The pipe works absolutely crap. This is your, 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 your um, another <laughs> shit hole of a room. Then you got the front room. You had to come out to renew that, because that was hanging off the wall. Have a look at the rest of the ups. In Liverpool, this is what you get for 90 quid a week. Walls cracking everywhere. It's, it's pathetic, it's just falling apart all over. We had to have a curtain up because the door fell off. This home is a private rent, where the housing benefit is paid straight to the landlord. This is this is the best, what one of, well, the best room in the house is. This doesn't need, it just needs a lick of paint in here. I've never had no no trouble in here. It's a nice street, this. It's, it's, it's quiet, but it's just the house. It's just not how it should be. Benefits housing in the UK is a bit chalk and cheese. The London flats enjoyed by single mums Emma and Sophie cost around 300 quid a week. But they're a world away from Julie and Vinnie's home. Liverpool offers private landlords good profits from benefits. 
Because here, you can buy houses like this for less than a packet of fags. If you can remember where they are. It's somewhere over that way. I think. I'm not sure. I've, never, I've only been down there twice. Um, yeah, they're selling houses over there. Um, through an auction at a fiver. It's all well and good buying him. Um, he's just having the money to do him up, really. You might get a decent one, you might get one that needs a hell of a lot of work doing on it, but it's just having the money to do it. I'd do it, mate, because it'd, be it'd, be it'd be a cool project. But it's, it's money. It's having the money to go and do it. Getting the dosh isn't the only challenge. You also have to summon up the energy. I'm knackered already, mate. And it's only about ten to nine. There is an easier way to improve your lot. In an area where demand for cheap housing is low, Vinny's decided he wants to move. Have you got any houses, Billa? This house within is fucking falling apart, mate. That's it, ain't the shoes are famous. <laughs> Emma Frost and nine of her 11 kids are also looking forward to a move to a huge housing association property. The other two kids, Toby and Sophie, already have their own homes and children on benefits. But while Heather waits for the keys, her life on the large goes on. That means endless washing and cooking and shopping that can cost 300 quid a week. Heather's always keen to make those benefits go as far as possible, so she buys stuff knocked off by local shoplifters. Yes! This delivery, it's kids' clothes and air fresheners. Everybody has to get stuff off shoplifters, don't they? You have to live otherwise. I'd be lost without my shoplifters because they bring a washi powder. Well, they do at half price what a shop does. The constant flow of shopping bags means Heather can ensure that her kids eat properly. They're always half eaters anyway. They like their um, fruit and veg and olives and fish and stuff like that. And after the school run and a spot of face painting, it's time to put that healthy eating into practice. What do you want for tea, babe? Beans. Yeah. Chips. Yep. Can I grab bangs and mash? Or would you want chips, beans and sausages? Fuck the health video, we'll just do a quick one. And you always get loads of meals left over in the evening. Now they all say they want dinner, then when it comes to eating it, half of them come and say, oh, I don't want that. Some days you get you want one thing and one want the other, so we have to compromise or I just do what I want to cook and they like it or lump it. Next kitchen. Fucking in, out, in, out. And that means today fish and olives are off the menu. Instead, it's frozen bargain bags for tea. Tilly. Mum, Tilly. Daisy. Emily. Beth. Tyler, that's what they're going to argue over who sits where now. I'll get Tilly now. Emily, come on, babe. And after all that effort, there's only one kid who's showing any interest. It's, it's a... Pee off when you've got to chuck food in the bin because they won't eat because they don't eat it. But then they've got what they asked for and they just don't want it. So Heather does have a man in her life. The camera shy father of her six youngest kids and the driver of all those wheels parked outside. But for many, the feature of life on the door is a missing other half. Only a third of single parents get financial support from the other parent. Emma and Sophie do, and they get contact as well. So they're lucky. Yeah, 
yeah. He sees his daughter, yeah. Things either stick or they unstick and we unstuck. Do you know what I mean? Life goes on, doesn't it? I've only been with their dad since I was 17. We've got four children together, obviously. Mm. We've been through so much together, like, we grown together you know we've had stupid arguments together like any couple does in life but like i genuinely believe that like he's the one that i will grow old with do you know what i mean the love of her life maybe but emma gets the most benefits by living alone with her kids we don't live together and he's obviously got to pay for his place where he lives and that so he does what he needs to do in that respect Anything, the children need love, care, financial support, interaction, education. He's there on that level with them. But Sophie doesn't find support so easy to come by. Yeah, if, yeah, if I really desperately need something, I'll ring him and I'll tell him that he needs to get it and then he'll get it. Or he'll pick her up and now um, we've made the plan where he sees her every weekend. Uh, so I have more time for me, more time for doing stuff that I need to be done. Do you know what I mean? I'll do what I can for her, do you know what I mean? Like, rely on other people. Rely on other people gets you nowhere. I'm an independent person. Independent young lady, let me tell you. But in Liverpool, even if Julie does wear the trousers, oh. she has got a man about the house. Push it up, me, to come. Get out of the way. You want to get it out, don't you? So fucking just play. Right. No, you're doing it wrong. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Do I'm going to boost him right up the fucking arse in a minute. And Vinny has secured the new home they wanted in the space of just a few days. Stick some fucking lift up. I'll, I'll, I'll have a coffee. It's only a street away, so everything's going by hand. <laughs> this is fucking mental, man. Get in. If you've got to fucking run with it, just run. Because I'm going to drop it. Right. Get in one step. One step. One step. Don't do it. Ah, you bastard, just shot my finger. But the move isn't the only good news for the Bienvenues. Julie's youngest daughter, Charlotte, has just got a job selling mobiles and SIM cards. £40 a day plus commission. Never felt so much proud in my life. <laughs> Um, no, um, signing off was basically something that, you know, I've been wanting to do, you know, I turned 20 on Monday and, you know, it would have been three years that I would have been on job seekers. so it was something that I finally managed to get myself into gear and sort of get my ass on the move and I finally did it. I can see other people's points of view where they've gone, well, we pay your money. In my point of view, I can see exactly where they're coming from when they say, you know, our money pays your benefits. Julie hasn't had a job for six years. Plenty of jobs for young ones like you. There are plenty. And that. There are, yeah, there are plenty of jobs but for young ones out there. Yeah, because they know that you young ones will stand there for nine, ten hours for 40 quid a day. <laughs> There's no way I'd work even for three, four pounds an hour. Not when, I, not when, not when I've got. I'll have a husband to support, a house to support. You're not going. You're not benefiting. It's good as it. What's up? Uh, she need a drink. So she do, yeah, just not understanding. She's going to be virtually paying out what four hundred pound a month then in rent, um, and then a council tax, and everything else. She's just not really. She's not gaining. At the end of the month, she'd be lucky if she's got a hundred quid to her name. Yeah, but, Mum, it's not the discussion I really want to have at the moment, is it? It's, it's not the discussion, darling, you, you ever want. But you have to face reality. Mum had to. Come on, one, two. Put my shoes on, I one, swear two. God. One, two, come on. Right come, on. Your fucking head. come on, put your shoes on, come on. <laughs> The Liverpool move shouldn't take more than a day or two. Go on. Go on. <laughs> but the new house for Heather and all those kids has run into a bit of trouble. I think my job is never never to get lecture yeah. home. And you're paying. Makes me laugh when it's gone up in price. It was a £40,000 house, now it's a 
5,000 pound house. Hey, 500 pounds? Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, 500. It's a fucking shitty council. Yeah. How have they got access into the house then? I don't know, they've got in the house. And there was 11 kids moving in with you, so we've got our own place. Like yeah, October's and Toby's does. not moving in with you, is he? No. Angel, is Angel's not in either, is she? Or is Angel? Yeah. She is. So there was 11 kids moving in with you? Yeah. I just can't see how they can. Um, I can't believe you're still talking fucking have news. The right. No, better than fucking talk about it. Have ever. the right to um, names like personal stuff as well. I think everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but I don't think it's fair to freaking pit her face and all her kids' face all over the freaking papers. You could go on about everybody, not just what? fucking Heather that's on the dog. My thing. brother just had a brand new house built in, brand new six bed. And he's only got six kids. Mm. I don't see his name. Um, he's full That's what I mean, yeah. So why just why just go mad at her when there's thousands and thousands and thousands don't of people out there that are claiming? What about the what about the alcoholics are claiming? I think that's worse than fucking her, isn't it? And they get disability some of them. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, you know, people that are actually just killing themselves who are getting our taxes. Chloe, get a towel. People that are actually, you know, using that how they should be to feed their children and clothe their children. You no, know, it's not like she goes out on the fucking piss every night, is it? Everybody wants to believe what they fucking read in the paper, and that's their own opinion, isn't it? Every child needs a house, like a roof over the head, I should say. So, Paul, this house is temporary accommodation. We have to move. It wasn't our choice for the council to build a new house. It's theirs. No one's put a gun to their fucking head. I think they're jealous. I think they're jealous. Fuck the lot of them. If somebody made me a brand new house, I'd move into it. I wouldn't say no. <coughs> everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but then everyone's entitled to a place to live. A huge family on benefits getting a brand new mini mansion. It was always going to be controversial. Fuck the lot of them. But there's much worse to come. The six bed, half a million quid mini mansion in Gloucestershire is nearly finished. The family, labelled some of Britain's biggest scroungers, is waiting for a date to move in. But as the day approaches, there's an unexpected twist. The Frost have lost the house. Heather is speechless. They've said the whole time that you can have the house and now suddenly, oh, you can't have it. That's not fair. Listen, we're not bothered. Your name's all over the fucking front page of every paper, you know, because this doll, queen, whatever's getting a 500 grand house. And then suddenly it's like, hmm, you're not having it. I'd be going fucking mental, mate. The shit you like to deal with. They go just mental. Get, give them giving you a house. Yeah, but going mental isn't going to get you the house. I think you need to get the phone to the fucking council, don't you? I know what's going on. Heather was convinced the new house was hers. Now the council says it doesn't meet her needs. Two hours later, you're going to give a six bedroom fucking house to then. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. That's the next exclusive, see? Are the people who get it going to get as much grief as what I got for having it? 500,000 house. Built for somebody. So let's see if they get the shit that I got for supposedly being allocated. And it's not just Heather who's disappointed. Politicians say the cost of benefits is way too high, so they've imposed a cap. And it could force single mum Emma out of her London flat to somewhere cheaper. Hello, Soph. Housing Benefit used to pay all the rent for Emma and the girls. But now, because of the cap, it's 140 quid a week short. No landlord is really going to be looking to forfeit £140 if they know that they can get it off someone else that can pay it in full. So they're, ba well, they're basically stating to me, um, Obviously, to start looking to move out of London in different boroughs. Yeah, London is a fancy place. It's where tourists come. You've got rich people here. 
But that doesn't make a difference because at the end of the day, we're still people regardless as what well, as to what our status is. Sophie's landlord has dropped her rent, so the benefits still cover the costs. The cap has the biggest impact in areas of high rent like London. But Sophie thinks it could sort out the sponges. If, if they actually see that you're doing something with your life and actually trying to do something, they yeah. help you to stay. But the people that are just doing nothing and just lazing around, then they need to kick up their backside, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? The cap would halve the benefits claimed by the Frost family. But because Ruby gets disability living allowance, they're exempt from the cuts. Too much, it? So uncertain outside. times for people on benefits in homes that cost a packet. But the future's bright for Julie and Vinny in Liverpool. Oh shit, and they brought me fucking that. They're just finishing off their move to a much nicer home on benefits. Well, oh. that's it. Out. Total to water. Just get this place sorted now. So you got the kick? Now, yes, Sonny Law got... Steve is sharing the tenancy. Come on, man, what's up with you? It's an arrangement that somehow gets them more benefits. Yeah. Because of me and Vinny being a couple, we'll get the 9175, even though Steve's coming in on the tenancy. And I don't know, I think it's £75 a week they'll pay for him, which is a lot more than what the rent is for that house. So, because it's paid monthly to the landlord, the landlord will actually pay that back then to us. I tell you what, kid, we got it fucking down. They're still paying the rent, but it's basically cheaper for us, so we keep, we're gaining in that way. And the cable TV man is back. <laughs> Bounce to the time. So, the spirits are high. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing hasn't changed. Julie still can't find a suitable job. I was actually talking to someone the other day, and she said, as soon as you get a laptop, she said, let me know. And, I, uh, and I said, I'm like, well, why? Well, once your phone line goes and you've got your um, laptop, and I work from home, well, doing what? Well, work for the travel agency. I would do that. But, again, working from home is going to be an impossibility because I have them two who want to watch telly and they won't think, oh, well, let's go upstairs and watch it. So they'll want to be downstairs. And if I go upstairs, then they'll make some excuse to want to be upstairs. So I'm not being funny, you're doing something like that from home, you can't have the noise in the background. But I don't want to be working from home. No, whenever you've turned it over already, fuck off! I haven't turned it over, I push TV. Right, the mute button's there on there. So with the move completed and no jobs on the horizon, it's back to the old routines. Hello, can I place an order for delivery, please? Takeaways in front of the telly. No! Short of getting a job, life couldn't be rosier. I think we've had a good result, really. Haven't we? Dad, Dad, comfy. I noticed, I noticed at nine o'clock over the road was sat out sunbathing. <laughs> but it really was a couple of tiring days. We need to go away on holiday, you know. We'll get away soon. So I get the house decorated now. Things are also looking up for the Frost family. After the house move disaster, there's good news on the home front. This is the kitchen. Soon to be a kitchen and diner when the wall comes out. Heather Frost's existing two council houses are going to be converted into a permanent six-bed home for her super-sized family. This is the other kitchen. That will be the dining room. This is the other lounge. Um, we're going to turn into a bedroom once the kitchen wall's been knocked through. Hopefully, yeah. everybody will have their own room. The cost will be thousands of pounds. And one thing's for sure, Heather won't be paid.